Dr. Ortho here. Welcome back to Pain Management University freshman year. Today we'll be learning about facet joints and their role in chronic pain conditions. First, it's imperative to understand how the spine is organized. We would suggest you review the material from the neck and back pain video. Okay, now that we're on the same page, let's talk about how the spine is put together. Facet joints connect one vertebra to the other along the back of the spine. We have a simple exercise to illustrate this idea. Try bending backwards. Now try bending side to side. All right, ready for the challenge? Try bending backwards and side to side at the same time. You wouldn't be able to do this if it weren't for the facet joints. These joints allow for spinal mobility and help us to enjoy our active lifestyles. Our spine consists of pairs of facet joints, one per side, at every vertebral level. However, here's the key word, joint. It's a joint, much like the knee, hip, or shoulder, it is a joint. We all know that knees, hips, and shoulders can eventually wear down in a condition called arthritis. However, if the knee wears down bad enough, no big deal, we can get you a new knee. Same is true for the hip and even the shoulder. Ready for the bad news? Even though we'd like to think that we have lots of fancy pills and medical gadgets, we still can't get you a new spine. That means that for the most part, when it comes to facet joints, you're kind of stuck with what you've got. When those facet joints wear down, it can be a source of mechanical pain anywhere in the spine. That's why we focus so heavily on exercises, body weight management, dietary adjustments, and activity modification to preserve those joints. However, when those joints wear down and develop arthritis, we do have ways to help you get through the pain. Like any other joint, we can insert cortisone, an anti-inflammatory, directly into the joint under x-ray guidance. This is done with a small needle under sterile conditions. This may settle the pain for months to allow your body to strengthen surrounding musculature and help with movement. But we thought long and hard and said to ourselves, there has to be a way to get spinal joint pain to settle down for longer periods of time. We thought and thought and then thought some more and bingo, got it. To understand, let's first go through a few things. First, the facet joints are located on the back end of the spine. They lie in close proximity to the spinal nerves. When broken down, they can not only cause neck or back pain, but also what's called referred pain. Local nerves can send pain signals to areas distant from the spine itself. For example, lumbar facet pain can cause pain in the hips or even behind the thighs. Cervical facet pain can cause headaches and shoulder blade pain. Here's where things get really interesting. There are a group of small nerves that are only responsible for telling you what's going on in the facet joints. They're what we call sensory nerves. They are messengers that have no functional use other than to tell you about your arthritis. These nerves are called your medial branch nerves. They run just around your facet joints. For people with facet joint pain, we can safely block these medial branch nerves with a numbing medicine. This is also done with a small needle under x-ray guidance. If a patient reports meaningful benefit with blocks of these medial branch nerves, then we know the pain is coming from the joints. This block is performed twice to make sure we've got our target. Why twice? Well, because we're perfectionists. Okay, fine, the insurance company makes us. If we all feel good that the facet joints are the pain source, we can discuss a long-term option. Using a similar needle under x-ray guidance, we can apply heat directly to the nerve and turn it off for longer periods of time, up to years. This procedure is called radiofrequency ablation, but like a famous athlete has many nicknames. Some call it neurotomy, rhizotomy, or even burning of the nerves. Fear not, we have no plan of setting your back on fire. The heat energy used is much like cautery. Patients would not feel the thermal energy as these medial branch nerves are first numbed. Recovery from such a procedure is quite straightforward. We apply small bandages to the needle sites and ask patients to ice the treated area for 20-minute periods intermittently for the first three days. 
It can take up to two weeks for full effect following the procedure, and we ask treated patients to avoid the typical strenuous activity that causes pain. We can offer conscious sedation for this procedure, and patients can return to work the following day. Most procedures of this nature do not take longer than 20 to 30 minutes. This is not a surgical procedure, and no skin incisions are made. This procedure is aimed to last a minimum of six months with benefits that can persist for years. It can be repeated within six months if needed. Our focus is to get you moving again. Say it with me, motion is lotion. Once again, we hope this has been informative. As you've advanced through freshman year, remember that no video can replace a formal medical consultation. Please subscribe to our channel to access future videos.